Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing. And today we're going to be doing some swim feeder fishing on a lake called Watmore Farm Fishery. Uh, it's in Hampshire and it's cold, it's winter, um, early winter. I've got a little gap with a mild spell but the water's still going to be cold. So we're going to be using swim feeders. Um, one at distance but I just can't help feeling that the fish might still be close in. So I'm going to bait up a little area close in. I'll show you what the ground bait is. Pretty basic as you can imagine. Couple of good tips though, couple of good tips. Right, first, the bait. Obviously, with a swim feeder, you need ground bait. You can go and buy some ground bait, or like me, you can mix it up. And I've made a mix here, very, very sloppy and wet mix. So sloppy, look, it, it almost won't fall out. That is bread, porridge oats, a little bit of bran, and some weight for this, dead maggots. Let me show you. Right, these are dead maggots. Now the reason I use these, twofold really, is the match fishermen when they're here, or indeed any fishery this is, they get used to feeding in the same spot, same spot, and that's the way you catch a fish. But the carp know this. So when they see maggots wriggling on the bottom, they know there's liable to be an angler there. At the end of the day, the anglers throw all their bait in, the maggots drown, they lay dead still, just a single maggot, just like that. And what happens? That's when the carp and the roach and all the other stuff, tench, bream, they move in and mop these up because they're confident, because they know these are dead. If these are dead, they've been drowned, i.e. the angler's have gone home. That's clever, isn't it? But the other reason I use these is because when you're fishing barbless hooks, especially in the winter when it's colder, you don't get so many bites, they wriggle off the hook. You're sitting there for a long time with a bare hook. So what I do is use these frozen ones like this, just freeze them live when you're left over at the end of a fishing trip. Then when you put them on the hook, they stay there. So even if you don't get a bite for some time, you know there's bait on the hook. Okay, those dead maggots are one tip. Here's another tip. Swim feeders I use are little cage feeders or just open end feeders about this big. Therefore, I like to roll up a lot of small baits, small little parcels, little balls of ground bait that are about the same size as the feeder. Now a lot of people like to work a swim up with the feeder, casting, give it five minutes casting, bring it back, load it again. But by doing this I've got little pockets all over the place out there that I've got that are like little baby swim feeder, swim feeder lets I'm going to call them. And you can either throw these out if you're going, say, 20 yards or so, or you can use a, a catapult. But make sure, make sure if you use a catapult, you use one with a cup, a proper cup to it. And another tip, that's a third tip I've given you already, we haven't even caught a fish. Third tip, just get a bowl of, well, bowl, get, use your bait bucket of water. Just before you go out, because it's a sloppy mix, dip it in the water, like that. And when you put your ground bait in the cup, it won't stick. When you, when, you, when you fire it out. And that's all you've got to do. It just saves it sticking in the pouch. So each time before you send one out, bang, away you go. All right, here we go. There's your maggots. That's frozen maggots there. And as you can see, they're not going to come off the barbless hook. There's the feeder. I've got it with a stop swivel, not a stop, not a stop swivel, just here so it can slide up and down. And that is the mix in there, the dreaded mix with porridge oats and about, I've got about a foot there from the hook. All you have to do is cast to the same spot every time. Yes, two more tips coming. Right, when you're gonna cast out there, what you wanna do is judge where you wanna cast, okay? Get it, try and get it right the first time, because that's where you wanna keep the bait feeding. Just throw it out like that, bam. As soon as it hits the water, put the line into one of these line clips it's the line holder on the side of the spool there okay just pop it in there and this is what i i do for small fish fishing say fish up to a couple of pounds that you know you're going to stop on three or four pound line so it's fixed so every time you cast again when you cast it's going to come off i'll show you there you are that's the cast line's coming off and bang it's come right up against the stop there so that way, every time you cast, even if you cast hard, you're not going to cast past your, your baited area. You're going to go bang, bang, bang every time in the same spot. Now the other way of doing that, of course, is you can cast out to the stop, and just for safety's sake, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight turns in, ten turns in, whatever you want, and just sink the line. And you know if you do get a big fish, you've got some leeway there to play it with 
before it comes up against a stop. Another way to target it is if you don't want to do that is to look for the reflection out on the water of something that's on land base that's not going to move. Right, the other way you can do it is you can find this reflection on the water, a tree, a bush, in this case there's a pylon out there. Now people think as the sun goes around during the day that these move, that they don't, but they don't move, they don't move, a reflection is a reflection, it stays in the same place. So if I aim, say, for the base of that pylon where it enters the water there, on the reflection, there, bang, I can get the same spot every time and I'm sure that my bait is going within a foot or two of where I want it to. All I'm going to do, sink the line and then watch the quiver tip. Now, as well as using those dead maggots, I'm going to be using the other feeder, second one, with a great big ka-chunking piece of flake on a size 2 carp hook barbless. Because although it's very, very cold and we're fishing in deeper water here, I still get the feeling that those carp will pick up a big bait. So we're keeping our options open. I'm going to fish one out, and I'm still going to fish one on the edge of the bank a little bit closer in. So I'm basically fishing two swims. Once you cast out, you just tighten up. I check the drag so line can come off. But the other most important thing, especially if you're in a water with there's some big tension, big carp, just put it on back wind. Right, that with the weight of the handle will pull it round, and then readjust the tension on your quiver tip just to put that slight bow in it, just to take the tension on the bow. As it takes up like this, you take up the tension from the handle. It's in case you get a big fish, at least that way. If you've got it set up properly, you can get back wind and it won't pull the rod in. That's the theory anyway, guys. Now all we've got to do is go fishing. Well, I was getting line bites the other day. Saw those guys match fishing. Now a chain swims. I've only come a little bit across to give me an angle to cast across, you know, to those pylons, to that marker so I get it on the right spot. But because I'm fishing straight out, there's less of a bow in the quiver tip and I want to be able to strike, so I don't want the quiver tip way back here, because this Oh, I had another bite. Another, uh, another strike back here, I'm going to miss it. So I'm actually fishing, wait for this, a quiver tip, an optonic, and a bobbin. So I've got visual here on the tip, visual on the bobbin, and of course I've got the audio, which I you know, it will pick up some bites straighter on the quiver tip. Hopefully, that's my theory. I've never tried this before, it's brand new for me, so fingers crossed we catch something. Right, this is what I'm doing. Swim feeder, full of the goody stuff. Bread, bran, porridge, oats. Now here's the worm. I'll just pop him off. Now what I do is I thread the worm around. As you can see, he's fallen straight off that barbless hook. So I, I thread him on with a good chunk through the middle. Then I pop that over the eye of the hook. Hook him twice more. Once, twice. Now those bottom ends are probably going to wriggle off anyway. So he'll end up getting over. The, the eye might hold him, but then just break a tiny piece of crust off, squeeze it hard, and then pop it just through like that. Now that's perfect. That is perfect, because a big fish can come along and he's going to engulf a lot, or a small fish can nibble away at the bread and still leave the worm there, and because I've popped it over the eye of the hook, it should stay there. So that's a swim feeder rig. Close in fishing more direct this time rather than being sideways onto the quiver to a more direct so I'm going to use those optonics as well it just gives me a bit of audible beeping there as well as the visual on the end of the quiver tip
Yeah, another one caught cool on the cage feeder, winter style. <laughs> it works. Oh, it's getting a bit parky now. I'm getting bites, but do you know I still think I'm getting liners. I'm, I'm going to go smaller and smaller with the worms. Getting colder and colder as well. Um, I'm going to drop the worm size down and then snap them on half so that I've got a bit of smell coming in the water. I'm either getting I'm either getting roach bites or or something peculiar is happening because they're, they're like tweaking on the tip. I can see even where the line enters the water. It's just tug, 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 tug. They're either line bites and roach or they're actually roach, in which case I need to come in a bit closer. So before it gets too cold for me to pack up fishing, I'm going to drop the worm size and go to small, small little bunches of them, see what those fish are. to see this roach. I thought it was a small carp, it's a big roach. So I hope it's gonna hang on, it's taking a small long worm right behind the feeder. Oh this one's a beauty. Now this, this is what you call a big roach. This is a big roach, for me anyway. Just check this roach out. This is a beauty. This fish must go one and a half pounds, I should think. That is beautiful. And there's a worm. And do you know what I got that roach on? Worm and a size two carp hook. That's ridiculous. That is really beautiful fish. Very pleased with that. Do you know what? That is absolutely, totally awesome. Feeder fishing. What a beauty. Well, I've either got a gigantic roach or a carp or something on here. But that was on the small worms. Just that vital change. Coming closer in. It's not a bad fish, this one. What is it? I can't see what it is. It's boiling, it's got that boil like a car. What is it? Oh, it's a big crucian. You want to see this crucian carp? You want to see this one? <laughs> Don't fall off. There's a lot to be said against not using barbless hooks when you get a fish this big. Get it, get it, get it. There we go. Yes, please. Look at this. Look at this, but a crucian carp. Let's get him up on the mat, take a look at it. Oh, that's a nice fish to catch. Just when you think it's all over. Ah, oh, that is. Two pounds and ten ounces tells me it's not all over. What a beauty. That's that big roach and this on worms, on the swim feeder. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? You know what I'm going to say. That is totally awesome swim feeder fishing. And let's get it back because the sun's got about another 15 minutes to go. But I've got a feeling if these are shoalfish, who knows, you might get lucky, folks. Let's get it back in the water. Feeder fishing in the winter. Get that £2.10. I could take those all day long. Mm -hmm.